community members, we're here to tell you about the newest feature to the Hustle Humbly community. I'm sure you've all heard of AI, and if you haven't, you're clearly living under a rug. <laughs> Guess what? The community members now have access to our very own Hustle Humbly AI. All of our episodes have been uploaded to this system, so you can now search for exactly what you're looking for. Tell us like an example, Alyssa, what would you do? Okay, so if you said, what did Alyssa say in that letter that she wrote to her neighborhood? I don't even remember what episode that was. Here's the bad news. I don't remember either. Me neither. <laughs> but you can go to the search feature and type that in and it will scan all of our episodes and find it and give it to you word for word. Yep. Blowing my mind. It will even give you a little link to take you right to that part of the episode if you want to hear us say it again. It's not just in text. You can have the audio too. It's truly amazing. So if you are in the Hustle Humbly community, you just head on over to your dashboard, hit that podcast search feature and you've got it all right there at your fingertips. Happy searching. Enjoy. House burns to the ground. You have the option to rebuild or take the cash and run. Like how close can we get and still get insurance? Pick your segment of who you're going after and go deep. Reinsurance and not to get insurance nerded out here, but... <laughs> About 70% of homes nationwide are underinsured. But I was able to prove it. I'm paying more, but I feel much better. Hi, y'all. Welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Hi, Alyssa. Hey, Katie. It's episode number 209. Okay. Today we have a guest in the virtual studio, um, Mark Peterson. And everyone who listens, who's been a listener, may know his lovely wife, Chelsea, has been on the show three times. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she's our most repeated guest. And now we get to hear Mark talk to us about insurance. So, Mark, tell us who you are, what you do, like your 30-second bio. All right. Yeah, that's that's big shoes to fill. Um, yeah, my lovely wife is Chelsea Peterson. Uh, I have an insurance agency that we own uh, with my brother. It's a second generation family agency. Uh, we are based out of Wisconsin and uh, we have 13 employees. We do about 50 percent personal lines, auto home and 50 percent commercial lines for businesses. Uh, but primarily we are in the Midwest. Uh, we're licensed in about 30 states, but um, primarily Midwest is our, our footprint. And I think the big thing is we, we are an independent agency. So as we get talking here, uh, you'll hear kind of my trends on that. So being an independent, we represent the client to the insurance company. So it's a different way to look at it as opposed to some agents uh, work for an insurance company, and then uh, that is their only company they represent. So yeah, uh, we have a, a growing agency. It's a lot of younger people. Um, that's kind of my bio. So y'all broker to Been a few doing different it companies. Yeah. So we, re we actually represent about 20 different insurance companies. I feel like that's almost what you have to do whenever there are insurance struggles out there. Because if you're limited to what one company can do, at least you have options to check others. Big time. That is a huge piece to it. And and we truly do represent the client. So if you have a claim situation, you know, we kind of go to bat for you. It's not like if the insurance company pays more money, it doesn't affect us at all. So uh, yeah, that's a great point because it's sometimes hard. You're in a struggle with your insurance company if there isn't an independent agent in there. Like if you just went to Allstate and bought your insurance, and then Allstate doesn't want to pay your claim. Like there is no one who's there to help you with that process. Mm -hmm. um, homeowners insurance can be a pretty dry topic, I would say. However, it's so important and it's becoming such a struggle in so many places. So we thought about getting like a local agent um, to us in Louisiana, but our struggles are different than your struggles. But I think there are struggles kind of nationwide about getting homeowners insurance. Are there any things that are specific to the markets that you service that you're seeing as far as a struggle with getting a homeowners insurance policy in place? Yeah, it's, it's a wild time right now. Uh, you know, 
I kind of relate it to the home market with interest rates. You know, when interest rates are low, every there's a lot of activity. Everyone's looking to buy whatever. The rates go up. Everyone tightens up. Not as many sales. You know that whole that whole game. In the insurance, it's the same way. It's they have hard markets and soft markets. So the last 15 years, we've been in a soft market. Insurance companies wanted to write business. Now take out coastal states because that's a different world. But uh, you know, when I'm talking kind of more in, in the Midwest, uh, insurance companies were making money. They wanted to continue to grow. Well, all of a sudden, a lot of storms hit. Building costs have gone through the roof. Uh, a lot of different factors. Kind of like the perfect storm of now insurance companies are pulling back. And that's exactly what you're you're saying there, Katie. So in the Midwest, we're pretty blessed. Uh, you know, we have no coastal exposures. We have no wildfires in California. Um we have a good stable of regional insurance companies, which again is a little bit different. Some parts of the country only have the big nationwide, you know, insurance companies. So um, we are pretty blessed in the Midwest. Now it's it's starting to trend where you know rates are going way up. We have had some companies pull out. Um, so yeah, it's just an interesting time right now. I don't know if you're how much you're following what's going on in Louisiana, but we have had so many insurance companies pull out. Um, we're really struggling with our flood insurance, you know, being um, in a state that's affected by hurricanes. And I mean, we've just been through the ringer with insurance. And this year has been when they have left the most. So it's been very challenging. Yeah. And we're yeah, left and with just a couple of options. Yeah. And so when they tell you the price is this, you're just like, okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a again, it's a wild time, and I feel bad for those states because what are you going to do? You can't force an insurance company to go in and offer rates and all that, and and the government kind of steps in. I know Florida has you know their uh, state pool or however that thing works, but um, yeah, it's hard. Okay, in your area, so it sounds like you're in a kind of nice spot, I guess, as far as. The They're, threats yeah. to insurance. Do you have any obstacles to homeowners getting insurance in your area? Do you come across any problems or is it pretty smooth sailing as far as there's some options? No, you know, uh, the obvious things like older homes, uh, a big thing for us is galvanized plumbing. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys have that where yeah. you are? So, mm -hmm. you know, homes with galvanized plumbing, probably two thirds of our companies don't want them. Uh, so you're limited right there. Uh, older furnaces, um, you know, water heaters, stuff like that is traditionally, you know, harder to place. Um, the big thing right now is roofs. So yes. I think, I think about 45% of insurance claims on homes is wind and hail. So that is a massive percentage of them. So in, in, in the Midwest lately, we've just gotten pounded with hail and tornadoes and storms and all that. So these insurance companies are making major changes on underwriting for roofs. Uh, a lot of them, once the roof hits age of uh, 15 years or older, they could change it to like an actual cash value, meaning if it's 20 grand to put a new roof on and they say it's 70% of its life is gone, they'll only pay 30% for the roof. Mm -hmm. So you got to really be careful on that. So that is definitely the main challenge that we're having right now. And that's got to be nationwide. It is nationwide. We have had a few deals this year in our office where the insurance company said they wouldn't insure it, but the roof was actually in really good shape. It just was in an area where there wasn't a lot of trees. It, it wasn't aged poorly. It was an architectural shingle, but because it was 16 years old, they just said no. It's just like a hard black and white yeah. on the age. Even though... It was in good condition. It was not leaking. Like there's no reason to replace this roof right now. Right. right. It, it does feel counterintuitive to go in and replace a roof that's fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It is very frustrating. And, you know, we come across that often. And again, I think that's where you go back to having an independent agent because they have multiple companies that they can check. If you're just going to State Farm and State Farm tells you the roof is they're not going to do it. Well, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um so the independent then, agent really hopefully can have options. Yeah. And I had a situation recently where it was a first time home buyer, young couple. We've really been struggling because the budget was low. 
And we've been looking and looking, and we finally find this house that checks most of the boxes, and the roof will probably need to be replaced in two to three years. And our biggest fear was getting insurance to close, but then after closing, the insurance inspector comes out and says, hey, based on what we see, you have, you know, three months to replace your roof. And she was like, we like actually wouldn't be able to do that. So what happens in that situation? So I told her she needs to get someone on the phone at whatever insurance company they choose and find out what the policy is. And she ended up fine. She was transparent with everyone about the age of the roof and that it it's not leaking. We had an inspection, but you can see see the age from the road. And she found one that said, if we come out and do an inspection, we always give 12 months. So that would give them time, you know, some, but we, I learned through that process that she talked to several different companies and some give three months notice, some give six and some give 12. And so I was like, that's interesting. I didn't even know that. Mark, how many insurance companies go and put eyes on a roof when they write a policy? Is it pretty much everyone? It's, it's almost everyone now. And that's changed in the last five years. Uh, you know, it used to be higher value homes. It used to be certain segments. And now it's kind of, they all do it. They all do it. What's the time frame on them doing it? Because it seems like we get the policy written, you know, maybe day 10 to 15 of our contract. And then we are closing 10 to 15 days later. But it seems like the insurance inspectors aren't going out for maybe 60 days. And so yeah, the it's... homeowners are surprised after closing so that's kind it, of been like do you know if there's an average time frame that they have it varies so much and that it is so frustrating on our side as being the agent because we think everything's good and some companies will do the inspection right away and then some i just had one that i i think i issued like last september and it just came through and now there's a problem and i said how you're you're literally what nine months right. after it's yeah. mind-blowing mm -hmm. every insurance company is so different on their processes. Right. And we're, I'm just now starting. I don't know how often they were really going out in the years past, but I have noticed this year more than ever, my clients who I closed are getting contacted two to three months is what it seems after we Yeah, that's probably about that. an average. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, another thing I wanted to mention is for real estate agents, the advising part on roofs, like you're talking about is, you know, if you guys can get ahead of of this, if you if you have a house that you can tell there is an issue, you know, maybe advising right away, you're either gonna have to replace this or let's try to find something else. And again, that you know, there's uh it's a tough conversation, but just yeah. being upfront with them. Uh mm -hmm, yeah. so many people try to get the sale and close, and then these the clients have these major problems with the right, insurance. They piece. won't know if you don't tell your clients that, that your roof is potentially going to be inspected by your insurance after closing, how would they ever know that? Especially right. even as a re repeat home buyer, oh, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. right. Interesting. What about some of the other systems? Like do we've had, I've noticed where water heater age has become sort of like this hard thing too. Like if your water heater is older than I think it was 40 years, I had one. It was like, Oh, doesn't oh. matter if it works. It's got to go. Like we're not going to insure this unless it's, it's new. Are there like some kind of specific parameters on water heater or things like that? Yeah, good question. And again, it's it varies so much with every carrier. But if I had to say, usually about 30 years is probably average on a water heater. Uh, yeah. You know, anything older than that, there is a high likely chance of something could go wrong. Yeah. But these companies in the last two years have just tightened up crazy. And again, they're losing money. Um you know how insurance works, and this may be a good thing so everyone can wrap their head around the premiums that come in. So for every hundred dollars that insurance company brings in, they pay out about sixty dollars of it for insurance claims. So they try to keep their claims under sixty percent of the premium they bring in, and then they have about thirty thirty five percent in administrative costs, you know commissions, blah blah blah. So about thirty five percent of that, and they work on a five percent profit margin. is pretty standard in the industry. So. Uh, wow. In the scheme of things, now insurance companies are huge and everyone thinks they make so much money, but their profit margin, if you looked at it, is actually pretty low in comparison to like uh, Pepsi, Coca-Cola has like an 18% profit margin. You know, if mm -hmm. you look at it like that, it is thin. Yeah. And they can't control the price of build materials. So they sort of have to just 
adjust based on that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time. And that's another big issue we're having right now. So not only are insurance companies, you know, they've lost money the last few years, so they're raising rates. It's kind of a double uh, hit because with building costs and inflation, all that have gone through the roof. So the standard, you know, in our agency, the probably the average home cost is 400,000. We're seeing probably 15 to 25 percent increases on the coverage we call it coverage a or your dwelling amount for insurance so that four hundred thousand is going to five hundred thousand so not only are you getting a base rate increase your your home oh value is going up they're the making they're valuing it 15 to 20 percent higher to like rebuild basically mm -hmm. exactly it's wild and they've said that i think i think the number is about 70 percent of homes nationwide are underinsured and i probably believe it yeah, um, yeah. Well, so right. if you look problem. at the value of your home and how much it went up in the last two to three years, that makes total sense to me, though. It, but could you rebuild? Who knows if you could rebuild it for that price or not? I'll tell you a great story. So Jay is a veteran and we have access to USAA. So when we were building our last house, I called to get the quote for homeowners insurance from USAA. In fact, it was fine. The price was good. Terms great. We take the policy and then they um, send like an update and they're like, well, we had to change your home's value um, based on the cost to rebuild. And we like aggregate data from nearby houses. So instead of it being $300,000 value, it has to be 500,000. And I called and I'm like, but listen, I literally just built this house. Like it just finished. So I know how much it cost and it wasn't $500,000. Like you can't tell me that it's going to cost me $500,000 to build it when I just built it for 300,000. Like I know, like I actually have the numbers and they were like, well, that's what we have to do. And I had to switch insurance because it increased my um, premium so much. I'm like, this doesn't make any logical sense. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I think that happens probably more now because it they're just very really often. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately a lot of agents try to skim on the coverage amount for premiums to get people in the doors. And then what happens is these inspections come back on the back end and it goes up. So it's a problem. And again, I think it's going to take a few years to shift out and let the companies get back where they need to be to make money, I guess, or be insured properly. Yeah. So I just redid all the insurance on our Tennessee cabin in Gatlinburg because we bought it in January of 2020, right before everything shut down and paid $299 for it. And then I probably added about 150000 value to it. And then when the market just went crazy, I was getting all these offers, real offers for like $850, $900, $850, $900. And so I had to go through this process with my insurance company because I was like, because, you know, they have fires at times. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't insured for 300. I wanted to be insured for 900 if something burnt to the ground. And I had to go through a little bit of a process to show that it was worth that much more in such a short period of time from buying it. But I was able to prove it. And um, so I, I'm paying more, but I feel much better, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's a good, that's a good point. And uh, so with insurance, home insurance, everyone, when you ask like, Hey, what should we, you know, insure your home for everyone thinks market value. And obviously that is what you think the house is worth, mm -hmm. but actually what insurance companies, they don't even really care about the market value. They want to know how sperms of the ground. What does it cost to rebuild that? That is, you know, mm -hmm. a straight rebuild cost is what they look at. So, you know, because part of your value, you also have the land cost, mm -hmm. right? And and that will always be there even if the house burns down. So uh, advising, you know, when people get a house, it, it's truly, hey, if this would burn to the ground, what does it cost to rebuild the exact house? Not necessarily what you're paying for. It could be, it could go either way. You know, the re right. rebuild cost could be double what the market value is or vice versa. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, and that's where an agent needs to advise you on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know that you could total a house, like a like you total a car, right? Like I never even considered the thought that you would total a house, right? Because every even with hurricanes, every damage like with an insurance claim I've ever heard of, like you repair, even if you had a flood. Like we had all these houses flood locally in 2016. Everyone got whatever insurance they were going to get and re. Build. Well, do you feel like the real estate industry is obsessed with leads? 
but no one is talking about how to convert them? We wanted to give you a system to take each lead and opportunity that comes in and convert them to a client and referrer for life. Build Your Own Business will walk you through how to prioritize and work each lead so that no one slips through the cracks. Find out more at hustlehumblypodcast.com slash BYOB. And when was Ida? Hurricane Ida mm-hmm. was 2021, mm-hmm. I think. I had clients who had a very small house on a very nice piece of property where I, when they bought it, in fact, Alyssa was the listing agent. My buyers bought it from her. So when they bought it, I said, this is great. If you ever want to add on to this house, it was just a small two bedroom house, but on this really nice property in a nice location, I'm like, you could add on and definitely get your money back because of the comps and what's around you. I think you could put money into this piece of land and you would get it back. Well, their house, a huge tree fell. It was right by their bedroom window. And for the record, in our inspections, I said, you guys need to have these trees looked at. They're really close to the house. This one over here, not close to the house, but was die, dying, dead, half, whatever. I'm like, you need to, and they had an arborist come like during our inspection process. The seller made some concessions. Well, they got the dead tree removed, but the tree that was closest to the house wasn't, I guess, all the way dead. It was sort of like a keep an eye on it situation. Well, during Ida, this tree, luckily they had gone to the neighbors because it fell where their master bedroom would have, they could have, and most likely would have been killed yes. in this house. They just got a feeling before it happened and grabbed the cat well, and store Yeah, in the middle of a storm. The They call their insurance. So the house, hey, it was around 200000 when they bought it. Okay. They call their insurance. The insurance comes and they're like, this house is, is totaled. It's going to cost us more to build what you had and the value of like when you bought it. And they had to tear it down and the insurance literally issued them a check to take to their mortgage company and pay off their mortgage. And so they own the land outright and they had to go get like a construction loan. Like they, that insurance was, that was done. Yeah. And they started again. I I mean, and when they were fortunate, they had those, they were able to do that. Yeah. Financially speaking, like they were qualified to get a loan. They built a bigger house. I just, have you ever seen houses get sold? That's a great story and a great point. Um, every state's different. Wisconsin, uh, if house burns to the ground, you have the option to rebuild or take the cash and run. You don't have to rebuild. Uh, I know other states, they make you rebuild and it might depend on, you know, the local mis- municipalities and stuff like that too. But yeah, you can get a check and get out of town and Right, like they could have just paid yeah. off their mortgage and then so, paid, like sold the lot and then just left. Like they didn't have yeah. to. And Alyssa, this is also when you talked about your value of your house, that's why you want your coverage A to be what you want. Because if, you know, or I say coverage A, your replacement cost on your house, if it burns to the ground and you don't want to rebuild, you want the market value, you know? So at least right. pair that coverage A amount with what the land value could be as well. That's a mm-hmm. great point. Yeah. And it wasn't an easy process. You know, I think they're really testing you to see like... Are you you sure you want, you know, we, we're not going to increase everybody, but if you're sure, I mean, there was a lot of hoops to jump through to get to get it upgraded, but it worked out. In I the mean, end. that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel there are a lack of carrier options? Like, I know your area, maybe, is it nationwide, though? Is it is it is it shrinking like the options for people for their insurance? Yeah, yeah big time. Um you know, there was just a big story in California, State Farm and Allstate are not writing new homes. Uh, we have a regional carrier in Iowa that's not writing new homes. Florida, you hear every day that a new company's leaving in, in Louisiana. So it is, again, that we haven't seen this type of a marketplace in the last 15, 20 years. And it there's going to be pain everywhere. Um, so... Yeah, it's it's a problem. Again, in the Midwest, we're pretty lucky because we have a good stable of Midwestern companies that only write business in the Midwest, which traditionally has been a safe spot, you know, for these companies. They always try to diversify. The nationwide companies want Midwestern business. Um, so and they can make some money. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. Well, it's and it's funny is how insurance kind of works is insurance companies buy insurance it's called reinsurance and not to get insurance nerd nerded out here but (laughs) uh, they buy insurance well the cost of the reinsurance that they're buying is either not there or super expensive so it's it's really putting pressure on the the main companies to underwrite better 
uh, clean up their book of business, stuff like that. So, yes. Are we <laughs> seeing people get out, like carriers leave a state because of an increase in natural disasters or just because of the increase in materials or is it a combination? You know, it's a combination of all that in home insurance specifically. And I'll give you a, a great example. In our hometown, we got hit by a hailstorm and it was insane. Every house in our whole city got a new roof. But what happened was the storm was like Friday night at 6 p.m. By Saturday morning at like 7 a.m., we had like 10 knocks on our door of these storm chaser contractors. So they're on it like that and they're hitting every house. So rewind the clock 10, 15 years ago, hailstorm would rip through. The people that knew they had damage, they'd, get a, they'd file a claim. Well, now these guys are like forcing everyone to file a claim and if they have damage, rightfully so. Um, but it's just changed it. So the cost of these storms have just like tripled in, in mm-hmm. cost of what these companies so are it's paying. More, it's the predatory salesmanship of the roofer or the fence guy or the whoever that shows up after the storm. The um, Here when we had the flood, it was all the people who needed to dry out your house, right? Mm-hmm. Like 100%. And, some of them, and look, you mm-hmm. still need, it's not like you don't need the roof, but if your roof is not leaking, sometimes hail damage is, it's like, it's not black or white. It's a little bit or a lot, or like maybe made, but it makes total sense that that behavior is then affecting. It's the same as locally. We have lots of um, personal injury lawsuits for cars and we have a lot of, um, all of the advertisements you see locally, billboards, TV, it's all personal injury lawyers who are trying to encourage you to sue the insurance company when you're in an accident. And so our car insurance is also really, really high, but I can mm-hmm. see, I never like put that together on homeowners insurance. It kind of makes sense though. Same thing. That it's yeah, the same and, thing. And it's it's kind of like Uber where they have surge pricing. The, the price of this, because there's lack of contractors, you know, is if a roof costs 20 grand, now it's 35. So yeah. it's just, it's wild. And, and also the lack of contractors out there. And I mean, again, it, we all know the issues that we're having. It's, it's a, it's a wild time. Yeah. All right. Talk to me about, we're going to go back to the inspection thing on new policies. I've heard a little bit recently about four point inspection. Do y'all have that? Do some of your carriers require that? I think in Florida, everyone now seems to be saying they have to get these four point inspections before they can get their homeowner's insurance. Are you familiar with that at all? Um, So I have my Florida license. I like five years ago, I was all gung ho. We had some connections down there. I wrote about eight policies and had eight issues <laughs> and then said that's enough. Uh, so yes, I know four point inspections uh, ish. They, you know what it is, it's, it's, they check out the roof, the four points is roof, roof, HVAC, plumbing, uh, what am I mean? Electrical. So they, in essence, go in and look at those to give the insurance company a report, right? Some of our home inspectors here have even made it like an add-on where if you need a four-point inspection, they will send you a separate document with just those items um, for you to send to the insurance company to get insurance. But so I just started like, hearing about yeah, we're it. We're just hearing it here. So I'm not sure if there's certain places. Yeah, Florida I know. has yeah. that. That's pretty standard, I, I think. Um, yeah. So, you know, that might be the trend as these companies try to do more underwriting you know, up outside front, yeah. of what they're offering. Yeah, up front. So mm-hmm. yeah, are it, there... go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, are there common things that you see happen to homes that people are surprised insurance doesn't cover? Um, we had situations recently where flooding is different than like a toilet leaking and flooding your home. You know, that's not flood insurance because that's inside the home and not caused by a natural disaster or something like that? Yeah. um, Great question. And, you know, water is always a problem. How, you know, how did the water come in the house? Um, You know, if it's from a pipe leaking, pretty straightforward, covered. Uh, But, you know, in Wisconsin, I don't, I don't think you guys have basements, but in Wisconsin, we have basements, common thing, cracking the foundation, the basement, water seeps in, Unfortunately, that's something that's not covered. So uh, insurance companies are starting to add on different coverages for like inland flood, where again, I don't mean to get too technical here, but you can buy coverage for these different water exposures now, uh, which is awesome. They didn't even offer it uh, a while back. 
Another big thing is mold. Uh, I just had a claim where the attic of a house, it was not properly ventilated or whatever. And there was the whole attic was full of mold and ended up being about 45,000 to clean it up. And the standard policy has 10,000 in property damage for mold. And that's pretty straightforward across all insurance carriers. So mold can be, you know, a, a thorn in your side. Um, you know, in the roofs, I think that also with the age of roofs, if someone has an older roof and they don't know that the insurance company changed the coverage on them, because what happens is that like, not every company, but a lot of them at 15 years or at 20 years old, they will change it to what we call actual cash value. And oh, they just send out a piece of paper. That in the mail. What's that? I guess you wouldn't realize that happens. They probably send you a notice, but it just. They'll send it in your renewal tucked on page three saying this change to actual cash value, meaning depreciation comes into play and it's a terrible thing. Mm. Things um, you don't like you really have to review your policy every year. But yeah, I wouldn't so again, know I how to the, do that. A like, takeaway I wouldn't is, even know what a to takeaway look at. is to uh, know your roof ages and know how your company responds to roofs. Because that, that really is a huge pain point right now. I have a personal question to myself. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, sure. Why not? Okay. So I have a few rental properties and they were all bought at different times and they are kind of spread out on which insurance company they're with. It's sort of a pain in the butt because you get, you know, notices and I'm like, wait, which person was this and yeah. who's carrying this one? And part of me was like, maybe I should just get them all under one company. But then I thought maybe that's a bad idea because if that one company has something happen, like, is it better to have them diversify? She's diversifying her insurance. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what you know, the right answer is. There's no right or wrong. But what I would tell you is it usually is best to put everything with one carrier. Uh, okay. Ease of mind, everything. You know, so again, in the Midwest, we have regional carriers that have true package policies. So mm -hmm. you have one effective date, your auto, your home, your rental properties, your umbrella are all on one policy, which makes it just so easy. Mm -hmm. um, but... It doesn't have to be. I think the thing you should be concerned about is making sure, do you have an umbrella policy? And again, this yes. is not. Yes. So making sure your umbrella policy goes over all of your rental properties. And okay. sometimes carriers will not allow that if they're not with the same insurance company. Oh. So that Got is it. kind of the rub why we always want it to be with one company to make sure your coverages flow back and forth. Okay, Makes great. Sense. That I'll go check on that right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I think my last question, it's more of, I want you to tell our listeners, because I find this fascinating and it comes up so much with homes, um, your commercial line, you have a specific niche and I want you to share with us what your niche is for your commercial insurance. Yeah. Uh, you know, great topic. So we have, uh, again, our agency is 50-50% personal lines of commercial. About 47% of our commercial lines are tree care companies. So arborists. I heard you say the word before, Katie. Yeah, I, I like an arborist. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's amazing because yeah. we need that so much here. We have so many old trees. We do have hurricanes. You know, I'm sure people everywhere need to check the health of their trees. But I thought it was fascinating because I'm also just fascinated by niche in any business that that was, how did y'all get into that? Like what, what, and for that to be so much of your commercial business? Yeah. So my brother went to school um, for forestry and then that was kind of his passion. And then my dad had the independent insurance agency. So we kind of meshed the two, but it's been really fun, uh, you know, with, with anything. And my wife preaches this through and through is pick your segment of who you're going after and go deep. And once people know what you do and, and all that, it's the sky's the limit. So yeah, we have probably, I don't know, 600 tree care companies nationwide. Uh, again, we're in, like I said, 30 some States. Uh, it's been really fun. We built the brand around it. It's called Arbor risk. Um, oh, and instead yeah. of Arbor risk. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very I bet Chelsea came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you have any other insurance questions? I don't think so. I was curious about this interview because it's like y'all, you and Chelsea's uh, careers 
are so opposite. Like hers yeah. is so creative and colorful and like pretty. Right. You don't get much more like straight lace than insurance. insurance. Yeah. yeah. You know what's yeah. funny about insurance is it, in homeowners, homeowners need it to get a mortgage. You have to have insurance. So it's part of the ecosystem of everything. And yeah, yeah it's dry. Yeah. It stinks, but you get, it's a people business. You have the relationship. Yeah. It's just like you guys. Um, you you get to know your customers, your advisors for them. I can't stress the importance of independent agents that is on your behalf as opposed to the the direct carriers or going direct to Progressive or whoever. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. But it is an interesting dynamic with Chelsea's business and my yeah. business. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's wonderful. Well, I think you did a great job. Yes, thank you. This was very helpful. We needed to, we put it off long enough. We needed to discuss it. So everyone, I mean, new agents need that type of information on kind of like the basis of your insurance. It's so important for your homeowners. Are there any places you would like to share with our audience where they can find you? They are in your area and wanted to maybe use your office for their insurance or... Um, if they have yeah, a question. Yeah, that would be great. Um, our website is aapeterson.com. So we're American Advantage Peterson Group. Um, again, like I said, we can do anything in the Midwest. Uh, I would love to. We we partner with a lot of mortgage brokers and real estate agents uh, to help them out in the buying process. So Perfect. yeah, go to our website and uh, connect with us there. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank this you, Mark. Great. This was wonderful. Um, yeah, we thanks can't for having me. For for everyone to listen and now they've now they've seen all the Petersons on the show. Except Henry. <laughs> Except Henry. We gotta get Henry on. We, we gotta get Henry on. Too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good day. And if you could do me a favor, just don't turn <laughs> off your computer until it says it's done processing. Okay. Because it'll Sounds take good. a Thanks minute. Thanks so much, guys. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Take care. Hi, Alyssa. Hey Katie. Welcome back to part two of Insurance Struggles. The perfect storm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Me from our Mark interview, which you just listened to, he gave us the perfect name, the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. uh, so kindly our, I believe, email list mm -hmm. or community, whichever one, um, responded to an email request to reach out to their preferred insurance agent and get their answer to this question. What are the specific struggles in your area that your clients are having acquiring homeowners insurance? And we wanted to do this because we're in Louisiana. Yep. Mark is Midwest. Correct. And there's still so much of the country, but every part of the country has a different struggle. Yeah. And some overlap. Yes. And some nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of fun to hear some other perspectives, and we're going to share those with you. Um yeah, I think that's that's yeah. good. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'll, I'll go. Because um, the first person who helped us was Gretchen Powers. And Gretchen is actually an ins not the insurance agent. This is a the realtor. realtor. Okay. But she's in Juneau, Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I find this to be fascinating. Yeah. She said, we have restrictions in our area of Juneau because some homes are in designated avalanche and mudslide zones. That's crazy. You can get insurance in the avalanche zones but not for in a slide zone. Hmm. I'm like, wow, I can't believe there's like a difference. Right. Slide zones, meaning mudslides, which include mud, rock, and trees, not snow. Lenders will not finance properties if they fall in a mudslide zone since they are uninsurable, which wow. I mean, makes perfect sense. We can't give you a loan if you can't get insurance. I wonder how many people own there. Well, she, Juneau is the capital, you know. She said mm -hmm. homes in some areas of downtown Juneau can only be sold to cash buyers, and it diverts buyers to other nearby areas who want close proximity to that area. Like how close can we get? And still get insurance. Yes. Kind of like our Grand Isle. Yeah. Like a lot of people just don't carry insurance because they are on, they are in the ocean. Basically. They are in the Gulf. They're basically on in the, in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to catch one now? Yeah. So Benjamin Payne with USI Services, um, he is in Roswell, Georgia. Okay. He said the biggest issue facing insurance consumers in the Atlanta office is the dramatic increase in premiums over the past few years due to the higher cost of constructions and increased litigation. Uh, I think that's going to be something we see more and more. Yeah. He said, I've seen auto and home insurance premiums double from what they were a few years back. 
And here in Baton Rouge, we actually just had a big company that was looking at coming and opening a division in Baton Rouge. Okay. And, you know, our legislature and everything had gone out of their way to cater these people and bring okay. them in and show them like the best that we have to offer. They got off the air they got off the plane at the airport and were taking their ride to the hotel. And said, I think we already know our answer. It's not going to work here because all of the billboards were personal injury billboards. What type? Do you remember what type of company it was? I don't, but it really didn't have that much to do with. It wasn't like a competing industry. No, it was. They were. They just said, we don't want to have a business in such a volatile, litigious state. It's a very litigious state. And just all of your billboards welcoming us has let us know that we can't do business here. Come and and make a lawsuit. Yeah, maybe you'll get sued. So I think that's a huge message to the attorneys out there. What? Well, I mean that that they're just advertising their business. I know, right? I do. Okay, I know. We're not going to dig into that. Um, okay, let's let's do another. But you know, it did come up when we were talking to Mark. Yeah. About how you know, kind of like these more predatory salesmanship things that happen when mm-hmm. there's one hailstorm and suddenly everyone gets a roof because yeah. the roofers are beating down your door mm-hmm. telling you, you have hail damage. You mm-hmm. need to get a new roof. Um, okay. Uh, um, our friend James got his insurance agent, Colton Zamzla. Zamzla. From Lincoln, Nebraska. In Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, and Colton had lots of good points, but we wanted to share this one. That this is the challenge. Loss history. Further scrutiny is being placed on prior claims, even if the claims weren't your fault or were from a previous owner. We've seen people get denied from coverage due to too many, typically two to four, weather-related claims on a home within a five-year span. Despite not being able to control the weather, that gets people declined or not renewed. Yeah. Uh, What is it called? The... um the sheet that you have to request. The clue report. The clue report. Yeah, clue report. Showing what claims the property has It's had. like the credit report for insurance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to be careful with that. Whenever I was buying one of my flip houses, the previous owner had done a claim for a busted pipe, and it kind of affected me. Um, I'll tell a quick story while we're on this. I had a sink overflow in my personal home huh, in 2020, and... Um, it touched the wood floor. The wood floor was ruined in a, like a large area of the house. Well, I call my insurance agent and he's like, can you repair it without making a claim? And I'm like, I maybe. It's like, I mean, if it's less than a couple thousand dollars, you should definitely not make a claim. I'm like, Ugh. oh, my God. Like, what is the point of the insurance? Well, as it turned out, because of the way my floors were laid, it, basically the entire house of wood floor had to be changed, which... Yeah is not $2,000 or less. No, it was a lot. So I did make a claim, but now I'm sort of like... Financing it. Be careful. (laughs) Right, and my premiums went up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like insurance. Did it go up a lot? Um, Not right away. And recently it's kind of hard to say, is it going up more now because of that or is it going up now because everyone's is, right? Yeah. Okay, who do you have next? Okay, so next I have Corey Path with Goosehead Insurance in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, good. Oh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, they said the biggest struggle right now up there is the roof. But m- along with that is that sellers are not disclosing how old the roof actually is and, and when it was last replaced. And maybe some sellers don't Sometimes know. you don't know. And sometimes I go back and look at previous property disclosures <laughs> to see if I can find it. Yeah. But not knowing, they sometimes people think maybe it would help if we just don't know. If it looks okay, you could say, well, maybe it's but 12 now, years old, even though it's really 16 years old. And I guess like Mark was saying, some insurance have like a hard stop. Yeah. So they're, they need to know the exact age or they're just not going to do it. Right. Mm. So like if you say it's 14 years old instead of 15. No, can't do but it. But he said many insurance companies are doing inspections and requiring certain repairs or total replacement to Yikes. keep your insurance. Okay. 
Um, so their their inspectors are really cracking down over there. Okay. okay. Um, I have Nancy Wells with the Wells Agency in Metro Atlanta. Okay. Okay. She said the industry is suffering significantly on the auto loss ratio side. State Farm last year reported eight billion in auto losses. Mm. Many companies will not write a new home without auto support. So, like you know, pairing the two together, right? Especially if the home is older. Many companies are canceling clients after one claim. Oh wow, Yikes. that is quick. Uh huh. Well, Bo Murray with State Farm in Nampa. Yeah, Nampa, Idaho. Idaho. Mm -hmm. He said probably the biggest challenge for them right now is prior home claims. Okay. Interesting. Another challenge we face is ensuring a home in an area that presents a wildfire hazard. Yeah. Wildfires seem to have become increasingly worse over the last decade, and this has caused insurance companies to have an elevated level of scrutiny in which areas they will cater to. Yeah. Just recently, I've been having a few insurance agents say, oh, we no longer do that zip code. Right. That's t So they're terrible. still in our city. Right. But they won't go to every zip code. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Ashley Averill in, in Mandeville, so in Louisiana, said, one of the specific struggles is the limited market in general. Where we used to have 20 plus homeowners, insurance carriers, we are down to a handful. And if the roof is older than five years, which many homes are, LA citizens or a sur or surplus lines carrier not backed by the state are one of the only options. And then it's more expensive. Yeah. So, so expensive. it's just like a, a such a limited amount of options. And especially when your roof is a little bit. And look, I wouldn't even call a roof that was six years old, old. No. You, some people might even call that new. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my last one is from Jean de Pascal. Okay. Okay. For, with all state in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He said, you need to be careful about saying, give me the cheapest coverage so I can just move forward and close on my loan. Yeah. Especially with interest rates being so high, people are worried about their monthly note. Yeah. Insurance is not the place that you want to cut back on. Right. So he said to ask yourselves when you're shopping, worst case scenario, heaven forbid you had a terrible accident, what are you going to pay for? Like what is going to come out of pocket? So saving a little bit up front for less coverage may not be the smartest thing to do. Right. So he was just saying that when it has gotten so high, he is seeing more consumers really push for cutting costs. Yeah. Which hurts you if something happens. Yeah. So be careful. Yeah. I I find all this very interesting mm -hmm. and, and a little nerve wracking and, and disturbing. Yeah. Because I don't know that there's not like good solutions, but you as your advocate of your client need to at least make sure they're aware. Yes. Hey, your roof is going to get checked possibly after closing. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you need to check the coverage. You know, are you getting the right like amount of coverage? Mm -hmm. What is your deductible? In Louisiana, there's a difference between your hurricane deductible and your regular deductible. Right. So you need to partner with an agent in your area, an insurance agent, to tell you the challenges where you are. Right. And to make sure that your clients are aware of what they need to be like, you know, checking. And I think that even more, this is so time sensitive with getting your insurance solidified during your inspection period. Oh yeah, right. During your due diligence time frame, because if you find out after your out period that insurance is way too high. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter unless it kicks you out of being qualified. You have to buy the house. Yeah, you'll be in breach if you don't. And I think that's in our due diligence checklist it is. that we have, mm -hmm. which is hustlehumblypodcast.com slash make, make sure. sure. Yeah. And so you can go download that. And it's sort of just your guide of mm -hmm. during your due diligence period. It's not just about having a home inspection. It's about making sure you can get insurance and that you're comfortable with everything else about the home. Correct. So check that out. Yep. This was a great episode. I was entertained. Yeah, I thought it was going to be kind vital, of, yeah. vital information. It's great. Are you ready for a toast? Yeah. So we sort of messed up because we were recording this differently than normal. Yes. And we didn't ask Mark for his toast. 
But we did talk about Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And I feel certain if I had to guess who he would toast to, (laughs) it would have been her. Yes. However, what we're going to do is we are going to toast to who? We are going to toast to Mark and Chelsea, the power couple. Power couples. And baby Henry. That's right. We've now had them all (laughs) on the show, with the exception of Henry. And we want to say cheers and thank you. Mark was so kind to come and give us a little Midwest perspective. Yeah. um, And tell us about his fun tree his arbor risk arbor risk <laughs> his arbor risk niche and um so cheers to chelsea and mark thank you i know they li- they listen yeah um and they've been such advocates for the podcast mm-hmm. and they're just such knowledgeable people yeah thanks so, guys yeah thanks for being you very well-rounded couple I, they really are <laughs> okay so cheers and goodbye cheers Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to ratethispodcast.com slash hustle humbly and leave us a review or drop a comment if you're listening on Spotify. If you have an episode topic or someone you'd like to toast on the show, please email us at team at hustle humbly podcast.com. Find us on social media at hustle humbly podcast. Don't forget to find all of the free resources at hustle humbly podcast.com slash resources. See you next week.